Hey guys, MTG Noob here, and uh, last time I brought you this deck, it looked a lot different, but this is the deck that just won GP Atlantic City. It's called the uh, Bant Enchantments deck. Something of that nature. So, long story short, let's talk about the deck. Mana base, 23 lands, 4 forests, an island, 4 harbor, 4 temple, Two Sandman Petal Grove, four Hollow Fountain, a Glacial Fortress, and three Cavern of Souls. I don't really know how relevant the Cavern of Souls are, but I would think you really want to be able to not get your creatures countered. Okay, speaking of creatures, let's talk about them. Um, first time around I showed you this deck, which was a month or two ago. Yeah, the Invisible Stalkers at four, and the Geist of St. Traps at four, and some like Elvish Visionaries or some BS that sucked. Um, Everything's kind of got an upgrade, a makeover, a facelift, whatever you want to call it. Four Pilgrims. The reason for the Pilgrim, it gets you to three really fast. That's essentially it. <clears throat> you can always do this and then throw an armor on it, you know, so it just speeds up your mana. And then this is the new guy in the mix, uh, Silverblade Paladin, at a three of. Uh, I think it's a three of probably because of the double white, to be honest. Uh, maybe they just felt like it's overkill because it's really not good when you pair it with this. So you really only have eight good targets to pair it with. But uh, you pair it with uh, a Geist and it's looking pretty nice. A you like how I rhymed incorrectly there? Alright, let's talk about the anything that's not an enchantment. You have Celestia Charm, which is actually pretty good in all of its modes. Um, you can plus two, plus two, and give something trample for the win. You can exile something with power five or greater, and you can make a knight token if you really need to, to pair it with this, end step pre in combat, etc., etc. Everything that's not an enchantment continued is increasing savagery. So put five 1-1 one -one counters on one of your unblockable or hexproof guys, and it's pretty much a nightmare for your opponent. It's very hard to deal with hexproof guys, as you know, but it's insanely hard to get um, a hexproof guy that is giant very dead. Um, okay, so let's talk about our enchantments. Abundant growth fixes your mana. It also draws you a card. Ethereal Armor is probably the second best enchantment in the deck. Uh, it gives you plus one, plus one, and first strike, which is very relevant, but gives you the, the plus one buff is ridiculous. Like if you have two in play, and then you have another, like one of these, you're just, your guys are giant. And then the best enchantment, in my opinion, in the deck is Rancor. Always comes back, by always I mean most of the time, and gives your guy Trample, which is really nasty, especially when it's a double striker. Okay, so let's talk about the sideboard. I'll move some of these things down so we can get a better understanding of what's doing. What's doing up in here, sideboard? Not much. Alright, so here we go. <clears throat> Feeling of dread for any aggro decks. Anything that's going to try to beat your face in before you beat theirs. Near Heath Pilgrim for anything that does not remove the Pilgrim, you can bring it in. It's an all-star in the mirror, and it's uh, it's really good. Other than that, it's just a nice little uh, life-gaining guy. So you can bring it in, gain some life. Seems nice. Negate for more or less anything that you're worried about. Sphinx's Revelation or, you know, d you know, like Detention Sphere, things like that that would knock off your enchantments. Rest in peace for graveyard decks. Remember, rest in peace does not combo well with your Rancors, you know, because they'd get exiled, so keep that in mind. mind I'm sure I'm going to have to tell myself that soon. Never more to name things like Sphinx's Revelation, Thrag Tusk, Supreme Verdict, Terminus, anything that just blows you out. Rootborn defenses against uh, mass removal decks, uh, Bonfire of the Damned, and, you know, more or less, I should say, Supreme Verdict. It's just a one way blowout. Also, you can use it to make an angel token, so it's got some nice synergy. And Smiter against like red and stuff that can't get through a 4 4. And finally, a card that I'm a little bit annoyed that I had to have in the deck, Angelic Overseer, because I think I sold mine for like a quarter way back when, and I just had to pick it up now for the deck for like 320. And I didn't want to cheat you guys and be like, oh, that Angelic Overseer is a. Is a 
15th land in the board, so I didn't cheap it up even though I want to. But in case you don't know what this card does, it's a flyer, it's 5-3, it gets hexproof and indestructible if you happen to control a human, which hopefully you will, and play this. Um, <clears throat> One thing in the board that I noticed, I think this deck is going to be extremely popular on Moto, is that in the board, I might want to clone, as dumb as that sounds, clone or two, because it seems like it comes down to who has more Geist of St. Traffs. Like, that seems what the mirror comes down. Obviously, if you get a gigantic Invisible Stalker, then that's a different story, but if you play Geist, you're probably winning if they don't have a good answer for it. So I might want to throw a clone in here somewhere. Uh, I'm not knowing for what at the moment, but that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking currently. Alright, so I'll bring you some matches with the deck. Thanks for watching. As always, please check out the mtgnoob.com.